If you are thinking of starting a Shopify business, starting an e-commerce business, or growing your current business that you have right now, and maybe you're not getting the sales that you want, you're seeing those gurus and those people that are talking about six figures, seven figures, and you're not even getting a couple of sales, you don't know how to get there, you want to watch this entire video until the end it will literally change your business and your life. When running an e-commerce business, the main platform that I always recommend is Shopify. You have many other ones, especially if you're doing drop shipping. You have Wix, you have Commerce HQ, you have WooCommerce. So there's many different options. The one that I mainly talk about is Shopify. And this is maybe your store right now. You have zero orders. You're maybe getting a couple of online visitors and you're thinking, what am I doing wrong? I see other people getting great results. I see other people making money. What is going on with my store? Why am I not making money? And in this video, I want to help you make the transition from this moment, which I was a couple of years ago. And a lot of my clients, a lot of my students have found themselves to this moment. For example, one of our students in France, she actually just crossed 63,000 pounds. This is British pounds. She's actually selling to the UK now. Her store is completely focused on the UK. 63,000 British pounds is about 88,000 US dollars this particular month. And as you can see, she got 40,000 online visitors. Usually that means that the profit on the store is really high. My students, my clients, you should get a 25 to 30% profit margin on their store. So what does it take to go from zero to 88,000 US dollars per month? And here you can see she actually started working with my strategies in October of 2020, just a couple of months ago. And here she says, happy new year to all. Here are my results for December, doing more than 35,000 per month. She was doing 35,000 per month before. She wanted to crack past that and get to the $88,000 per month. And here we have another student as well, Alvaro, getting a couple of sales, $60 per week, $100 per week, all the way to 630,000 US dollars in the span of July to November 2020. And what causes that change? What are the things that mainly bring someone from getting a couple of sales to absolutely achieving mastery in this game? So the first thing that you need to do is you got to determine what you want to do. There are many layers and many steps in this process, and you need to determine which one you want to do. We have drop shipping, which basically means selling products manufactured outside of your control. You can't control the manufacturing process. You can't control the supplier process. Yes, you can pick which supplier you're going to go with, but mainly it's just for better margins. You are going to have a bigger profit margin than somebody that is warehousing their products, and you're going to have easier operations. It's going to be easier to run the business. You can just fulfill things through an, a third party, or you can use a company like the ones that we talked about, Udropy, Source Inbox, or eProlo. You can go and find a supplier. From the supplier, you send it over to the customer, and you don't touch the product. Obviously, the quality will be a lot less. The shipping times will be longer, but it is a better method to start with. So if you're just starting, thinking about starting, highly recommend you look into drop shipping. And there's a lot of videos in this channel to learn that particular method. The second method is private labeling. It's a little bit of a higher quality drop shipping, basically going up a level, drop shipping upgraded, adding a layer of personalization and branding to your products for customer loyalty. Basically what private labeling means, it does not mean warehousing. It does not mean building a legitimate eight figure, 10 figure, whatever brand, whatever your goals are. Private labeling just means sticking your label and your logo on a product. So whether you're selling five or 5,000 private labeling, all it means is getting a product from somebody else that you did not make, you did not manufacture, and putting your label and your logo on it. Highly recommended once you start drop shipping. If you can immediately go into private labeling and put customization on your products, that is definitely a thing to go for, especially now in the years to come, that there's so much competition, so many drop shippers. You don't just want to be a drop shipper, you want to be a brand. The next one is warehousing and shipping control. And usually these four things that I'm going to talk about, they all go step by step. So first up, you do drop shipping, then you do private labeling then you do warehousing, and then you do the other one that I'm going to talk about. So warehousing and shipping control, you basically take the products from a manufacturer. Again, you don't control that. You can pick which manufacturer you have. And from that manufacturer, you send those packages over to the US, the UK, wherever you are selling to. You warehouse them there, you keep them there, and then you ship them from that warehouse over to somebody else. In the US, you can use a warehouse like ShipBop. In the UK, you can use many 
uh, different warehouses that they have all around the country. In Europe, there's a lot of warehouses, Canada as well. And with this, you get much shorter shipping times, two to three day shipping. You can compete with Amazon and all the big guys. You have better customer experience and you have a stronger brand building. You can also get returns from customers. They don't have to send it to China. They can just send it to your warehouse, send it back. So it's very easy to build a brand once you have a warehouse. I would highly recommend you get to this point or you start looking at this point once you hit that 20K, 30K per month in revenue mark, then you can explore the warehousing and then manufacturing control and building an ultimate brand. This is where you actually meet the manufacturer. You maybe take a manufacturer in the US instead of using a manufacturer in China. We will see how this year progresses. Maybe there's a lot of new companies that are popping up in the US that are looking for manufacturers in the US like S Pocket and many other brands that are just looking for suppliers in the US and Canada or in Europe specifically. So you don't need to rely in China. I know you Droppy, one of the companies that we like to refer to our students, they actually have some suppliers in Europe available for you to use to ship your products. You work with trusted manufacturers, you have strict quality control, you yourself test the products, check the products, you go to the manufacturing plant, you actually check them, make sure everything is very legit. And then you build a long-term sustainable brand to the seven figures, eight figures and beyond. Usually these will be the four steps in order to create a very successful brand. I highly recommend you to pick one of them. If you are a beginner, if you are just starting, pick dropshipping, go to private labeling, go to warehousing and then manufacturing. And if you are in the middle of one of those, maybe you are private labeling and you're doing really well, look at getting your own warehouse or at least having a warehouse from somebody else that you can actually send products to and send to your customers. The next up, steps that you will go through. And I know that many people tell you, hey, this is an easy business. Or I see many videos out there, which I'm never gonna make a video like that. But I see, I tried drop shipping for seven days, or I did drop shipping with just a hundred dollars. And then they magically are successful. They get a bunch of sales with one of those. Hey, I'm starting drop shipping with a hundred bucks and I made $3,000, I made $10,000. Most of them are not real. And the steps that you'll actually go through are these five. We're going to go through step by step. The first one is the startup phase. You're pumped. You're hyped. You start with energy. You build a Shopify store. You get it ready. You say, I'm going to launch my brand. And you kind of look like a startup. One of those companies that just start up and they want to become a unicorn. They want to become a billion dollar company. And you put all the effort, all the hype, everything in those first couple of days or weeks. I see many people doing this, especially some of our clients. They just are absolutely hyped. They want to work 24 hours a day during the startup phase. Then you go on to the struggle phase, which is manufacturers don't respond to you because you don't have any sales yet. You have to learn and actually master advertising. And that takes a long time. And you think, ah, that's too hard. I'm maybe going to just hire someone to do my ads or yeah, ads are too hard for me. I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if this is the right type of business that I should be doing. Problems with ad accounts, maybe Google bans you, Facebook bans you. And this phase is the phase that determines, are you going to be successful or are you just going to be one of the 90% of people that fail? Because everybody in the startup phase, when they're just starting, they're always so energetic and they're always, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to build the next Amazon. I'm going to build the next Blendjet. And then they get to the struggle phase and it's like, oops, this is much harder than I thought. Oh, Facebook rejected my ads. You know what? I'm going to go and do something else. And if you get past this phase, that is what's going to determine if you're actually going to be successful. Because after the struggle phase, you have the discipline phase. Not the success. You're not going to get to success yet. You're going to get to discipline. Discipline means you start testing a lot of products. You start multiple product testing, advertising. You start fulfilling your first couple of orders. You start learning how the process is. You start getting your first couple of customers saying, oh, I love your product or I hate your product. And you have to deal with that. You're not making that much profit, but you're learning as you go. As that student that I set from France that's making 88,000, she was in this space for a while, making $100, $300 per day consistently, disciplined and doing the same thing over and over. And this is also a phase where some people quit because they think it's boring. They think, oh, I don't have enough willpower to do this. But it's not willpower, it's not motivation, it's discipline. You have to do it again and again and again until you learn it. Then you have step four, confidence phase. You're profitable, you're growing. You start hiring people to help you, you start building a team. Maybe you have a team of two, three people and you feel confident, you're like, I'm, I'm building a brand, I'm building a company. You can solve obstacles quickly. Facebook bans you, all right, let's get another ad account. 
Google says something about your products. All right, let's get a new Google account or let's get a something else or let's fix that and fix this and fix that. And you start beating obstacles. And that's where you're confident about your business. You're confident that you can be profitable. Maybe you have a nine to five job. You quit that and slowly you start getting better and better and better. That's a confidence phase. And after the confidence phase starts the mastery phase. You really turn your little startup into a brand. And you're not a startup, you're a stay up. I learned this from Jason Fried. I've read a lot of his books. He built Basecamp, a multi-million dollar company. And he says, don't be a startup, be a stay up. Stay up and actually master your business. Get to a level of making a lot of money. You improve customer experience. You get to the manufacturing process and you scale to six figures plus. If you struggle within one of these phases, especially the struggle phase, when it seems like everything is against you, and nothing is working. All the strategies that people are talking about, nothing works. Just keep going because then the faces become easier and better and better. Remember, I never said success, richness. The point is not to be lucky and be successful one day and think, oh, I'm done because you're going to have to keep running that business and running that business. And then you're going to have ideas about, oh, how can I invest my money and how can I buy stocks or buy that or real estate? You need to keep mastering and mastering and mastering. And mastery takes forever, a lifetime, basically. I would also advise you to figure out what you want, especially in business, but also in life. For example, here I have one picture that pretty much illustrates what I want in my life. I don't want a Lamborghini. I don't want a fancy house. We stay as frugal as possible. Sometimes, yes, we do treat ourselves. But here, for example, it's me and my wife in the desert in Dubai riding a four by or a boogie. Not really sure how it's called. And this is the life that I want freedom, being able to travel everywhere I want, being able to adventure, being able to just go to cool places. And that's what I want. And you have to determine what you want. Maybe what you want is a bunch of jewelry or Rolexes or fancy things around your house. Maybe you, you want to treat yourself to a bunch of food. Maybe you want to just travel in business class or first class. And maybe you want to stay in a villa in Maldives or something. Maybe that's your goal. Maybe that's what you want to do. Or maybe you just want to buy a bunch of cars, buy a bunch of houses. Whatever the goal is, you have to figure out what you want because then we can work to get towards that point. And if you don't know what you want, you don't know the goal, you don't know what you want to get out of this business, maybe it's, hey, I just want to make some extra money so I can work less on my job that I have or I can quit the job that I have. Figure out what you want and then you're going to be able to get to that point. Now that you know what you want, how do you speed up the process to actually get to that point. I'm going to tell you exactly how. First thing, get a roadmap. Take courses, free courses, watch YouTube videos. There's a lot of people here on YouTube giving advice about how to build an e-commerce business, how to build a Shopify business. Watch those videos, watch those courses, watch my videos here on the channel. There's hundreds of videos that you can watch and actually learn from. Learn from every possible resource you can. And the great thing about this is that information is free on the internet. So you can just learn as much as you want and then you can determine, okay, I'm actually going to do that. Or maybe someone says, hey, maybe you do one product drop shipping and you try it out. Maybe it's not for you. You try branded drop shipping, or maybe you try building a brand. You try different types of softwares and you find out what is for you and you find out what you really want to do and what is the best fit that fits you and your business. And then you do that. But the important thing is to learn and learn and learn, especially in the beginning and have a roadmap, actually a clear step-by-step -step process to how to get there. So it doesn't take you 10 years to making 10 grand a month, but actually it takes you just one or six months. Also get a mentor. This is definitely one important one that I didn't do in the beginning. And it was really hard to actually make money and be profitable, especially in the beginning. You want to work with someone who has done it before. If you don't have the money, you can shadow a business owner in your area. Try to get somebody that you can just follow them around for a couple of days and learn from their business. If you do have money, highly recommend you join a mentorship program. You go and you get help from a mentor. Or you just hire a company, a team to help you speed up your success. For example, what we give our students and our clients is a team of 15 people that I've trained myself that are exp experts on Shopify and can actually help you with your business and grow it. That's what I give to my clients. You can also find that by yourself. You can go and hire people or hire a company that can give you that team and help you succeed. Work. The third thing that you have to do is just work. There's no shortcuts. You just have to put in the work constant, imperfect, don't try to be perfect, and focused action. Don't work on your business while you're checking Snapchat or you're checking this new app called Clubhouse or you're checking uh, TikTok. Work on your business. 
as much as humanly possible, as focused as possible and be imperfect. Just get it done. Get it done next step. Get it done next step and put in the work again and again. Like I said, discipline again and again and again, and it will happen. The next thing is build a network, find Facebook groups, go to online events. We have a five-day life training starting up in a couple of days. You definitely want to join that with the first thing in the description. You want to connect with as many people in the industry and you want to just know people so they can give you some advice. You want to post in Facebook groups, join Facebook groups, learn all about the business and actually meet people that are successful in it. And the last thing is hire when it hurts. If a particular task is taking way too much time and you have the budget to outsource it and actually hire someone to help you do it, hire them. But make sure that you do have the budget to hire someone. Let's say product research is taking you hundreds of hours and it's taking you just too much time, too much effort, you hate it. Hire a product researcher. $500 a month, $1,000 a month. You can find as many products as you want. We give our students a full-time product researcher that can find them products, many as they want. Definitely hire someone. It'll be worth your time. If it hurts, if you're just lazy and you don't want to do something and you want to hire someone because you're lazy, that's not the right way. You want to hire someone only if you really don't have the time to do it or you just, it hurts too much. You just don't like it at all. And it takes up too much time to do. And you do have the budget to actually outsource it. And I want to leave you with this little quote from Jason Fried, a very successful guy that I learned from. And what you do is what matters, not what you think or say or plan. Don't make a plan and then don't stick to it. Make a plan, stick to it every single step, step by step by step. Go through the faces that I talk about. Determine what you want to do first and then go through the faces. Startup, struggle, discipline, confidence, and mastery. Once you get to mastery, it is all worth it. If you want to learn more about this business, grow your business, take your business up to six figures, seven figures, and more, and you want to learn directly from me live, we're starting our five-day live training, January 18, 2021. If you're watching this after this, you can catch up the next training. We're going to be doing them every couple of months. So make sure to click that first link in the description to find out when the next five-day live event, it is for free. We'll teach you everything you need to know in this business to get massive results. And if you want to get results for your business and actually work with me and me mentor you in your business, actually have a mentor and a team. Like I talk about getting my whole team to work with you and help you grow your business. Make sure to click that second link in the description, book a free call. Let's see if we're the right fit to work together. And if we are, then we'll tell you what we have to offer. You can talk to my partner or my six figure student to actually get your results in your business and grow it to the absolute next level. It's a second link in the description. One of the main keys to be successful with e-commerce and Shopify is the products, what product you sell and how do you find it? If you wanna learn how to find winning products and actually get a list of my top winning products, I made a list and a video of the top 10 winning products that you should sell in 2021. Make sure to check that video right now. I teach you a little bit about how I found them, why they are winners and the exact products that you need to learn. Click the button right here to find out. Subscribe, hit that notification bell and that like button and I will see you on the next video.